Hello, it is Salaam Alaikum Warahmatullah. I'm Javed Iqbal, and today we are starting a series of our lectures on surgical anatomy. The beneficiaries of this uh, series will be undergraduate medical students, the postgraduates, and especially surgical residents. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic, and that is surgical anatomy of breast. Now, for a surgeon, this is important because the incidence of carcinoma of breast is on rise. In Pakistan alone, every 13th, every 13th woman is likely to have carcinoma of breast. Now, the management of the carcinoma of breast depends upon a very, very precise and very crisp understanding of anatomy of breast. So, in this video, we would like to discuss the surgical anatomy. This is axilla and roughly this is breast. This is clavicle, this is midline. Now this organ which is present in both male and female is hormone dependent for its growth. Both a male child and a female child, they do have breast tissue, but around the age of 12 to 13, because of the dominance of female hormones, breast starts developing in female. Grossly, its upper limit is second rib and sixth rib. And anterior axillary line and the sternal line. This is the gross protuberant part of the breast. But the actual histological part of the breast starts from clavicle up to eighth rib from mid axillary line to the mid line of the chest. Now this point is very important to understand because when you do a thyroid, when you are going to do breast surgery, you have to do a complete clearance. So the real extent of removal of the breast is not just the protuberant part of the breast, but the breast which starts from clavicle to eighth rib, from mid axillary line to central line, mid sternal line. So this is the gross part of it. Now, breast, if you look at its histology, this is just like an orange. It is not coincidental that in cancer breast, the skin over breast is designated as PUD orange, like orange-like skin. But if you actually see an adult breast, it is just like an orange. If you peel off an orange, what you see is that there are these lobules in breast. And they are from 16 so, in other words, the protuberant, the, the protuberant looking breast has got 16 sub breasts there. Now, these lobules are anchored and maintain its protuberant shape because of certain thick fibers which are called ligament of Ashley Cooper. On one side, these fibers are attached inside on the pectoral fascia and outside to the skin. And actually, tethering of the skin because of taut Ashley Cooper ligament is responsible for a typical appearance of PUD orange in cancer of breast. Because, for example, if there's a tumor here, this tumor is going to pull this ligament down. As a result, you will, have, you will feel a dip here and the surrounding area will appear edematous. And if there is at many places, it is called Pew D orange. Now each one of them has got, if I just, uh, if you allow me to make a magnified view of one of the lobules like this, they have got cells which are milk producing cells. And in the center there is a duct and this duct opens over here. And when you visualize the breast from front, like this, 
you have 16 of these openings present here on the nipple and it is like this. Those of you who understand Punjabi or Urdu, I don't know how our elders knew that our dadiyan said that if you don't want to say that, then I will not forgive you for 32 years. So I don't know whether, how they knew that there are 16 streams on one side and 16 streams on the other side. So that is Bhatti Dhare, right? So this is the gross anatomy and histology of the breast. Please remember that breast is a modified sweat gland. In other words, breast is present superficial to the deep fascia. So there is a skin, underneath the skin, there is a fatty tissue and then there are lobules of the breast and then there is a deep fascia and deep fascia of the breast is called pectoralis fascia. Now I would like to just repeat this point because when you have to clear the breast in case of breast cancer surgery, you have to make sure that you go up to the clavicle, you have to make sure you go up to the eighth rib, you have to make sure that you go up to the mid clavicular line and that is when you expose the muscles of serratus anticus or serratus interior. That will ensure that you have gone up to that level and here you have to go up to midline. And on the deeper side, you have to take the pectoralis fascia with it. If you don't do it, then you have not done a good clearance of the breast. This is why this cross anatomical arrangement is very very important to understand. Now, the other thing to note is the blood supply of the breast. Breast is supplied from all sides. It's a very vascular organ, but especially so in the time of puberty and also in the time of lactation and pregnancy. Because pregnancy is preparation for lactation. So during th those periods, breast is a very, very vascular organ and this vascularity is through vessels from all sides. The main supply, if you remember, if this is sternum and these are the ribs which are coming just parallel to the sternum, there is an artery going which is called internal mammary artery. Now this is inside the chest. From there, at the second, third and fourth intercostal space, it gives an artery which springs out from this space. These arteries are the main blood supply from the medial side of the breast. And there from the axilla, branches of the subclavian artery, which is the left thoracic artery, is the branch which is branch of the subclavian artery, axillary artery, and that supplies the breast. Apart from that, branch which is called thoracoacromial branch of the axillary artery also supplies its blood from this side. And some of the blood also comes from the abdominal wall and supplies the lower portion of the breast. And the veins accompany this. Now this is also very important if you want to understand the dissemination of the tumor and also for a surgical point of view, this is very, very important when you have to dissect the breast. The other important aspect of anatomy of the breast, which is probably the most important and probably the most important aspect for surgeon is its lymphatic drainage. Because involvement of lymph nodes of a cancer and not involvement of a lymph node actually divides the breast into stage 1 and stage 2. This is why clinically, with the help of the laboratory tests and with the help of histological tests and radiological tests, it is very important to understand the lymphatic arrangement around the breast. Please remember that breast has got two systems of lymphatics. Some are subareolar and some are sub mammary. A complex of the lymphatics are present just behind the areola and there is a deep complex which is present 
behind the breast which is submembrane and lymph can flow to any of these direction depending upon the pressure maybe depending upon the pressure of the bra the lymphatics can turn on one side or another side and whenever there is a tumor the presence of the tumor can cause drift in the direction of the lymphatic flow but on a normal breast they are lymph nodes in axilla which are five in number there are lymph nodes around the sternum which are with each intercostal space and there are lymphatics which go down from here and they all make a very complex system of drainage of the lymph from the breast and the importance of it is because this is the track these are the tracks through which tumor cells actually go and enlarge the lymph nodes now i would like to further elaborate it please listen it very carefully in order to know it further we can actually divide the breast into four quadrants the upper outer the lower outer the inner lower and the upper lower upper and outer quadrant is the most common place for cancer of the breast and rest of them come after that and lymph from this side goes into one of the five lymph nodes of the axilla and please these five are anterior posterior central lateral and apical the anterior ones are there exactly on the interior axillary line and they drain the lymph from the outer outer lower and upper quadrant of the breast and the posterior one is also called subscapular it actually drains the submembrane part of the lymphatics into the axilla the central one does not drain the breast it only drains a place where i'm putting my hand that is the axilla itself is drained by this and all of them they join together and they drain into apical lymph node the other name of apical lymph node is infraclavicular lymph node and from there it goes into supraclavicular lymph node this point is so important that i would like to repeat that lymph from the interior side and sub areolar plexus go to anterior axillary lymph node one from the submembrane goes to the posterior one and central one only drains the skin of the breast and all of them become together and they drain into infraclavicular and then it goes to the supraclavicular now this anatomical understanding is very important because when you remove these lymph nodes in the form of axillary dissection please remember that they are distributed around the axillary artery and pectoralis minor muscle divides the artery into three parts and when you do the surgery those lymph nodes which are distal to the pectoralis minor they are called level 1 those which are behind the pectoralis minor are called level 2 those which are above are called level 3 and when you do cancer surgery you must remove level 1 and level 2 lymph nodes if these two are not removed then it's an incomplete cancer surgery having said that the other important channel of the lymph nodes is through the internal mammary lymph nodes and these lymph nodes may also be involved in the breast cancer and some of the limbs which are actually behind the diaphragm which are celiac lymph nodes they can sometime be involved also in the cancer however with the advent of modern radio and chemotherapy normally when we do a surgical resection we don't touch these or touch these ones however the old halsted when invented halsted mastectomy he actually removed all these lymph nodes as well so this is the brief uh, anatomy of the breast it is also supplied by parasympathetic nerves 
and these nerves along with hormones are responsible for the physiological function of the breast. Now in the end, I would like to just describe to you the simple steps of how we do mastectomy, not for the purpose of teaching you the surgical steps, but just to revise the anatomy of the breast. Because we learn anatomy of the breast only for one reason, so that we can understand cancer breast well. Now when we do a mastectomy, what we do is, we, let me rub it off. What we do is, if this is breast, what we do is, we give a transverse incision and the principle of the incision is, it should include nipple and areola and it should include the skin which, you, which is over the lump, over the tumor. You give this incision, then you lift this flap up, up to clavicle. And when you go up to the clavicle, you start seeing the fibers of the pectoralis major muscle. And from there, you start doing a dissection in such a way that you go behind the pectoralis fascia, but in front of pectoralis muscle. And you keep on dissecting it down. On the lower side, you raise a flap till you see the rectus abdominis muscles and muscles of the interior abdominal wall. And from this side, you go up to the midline. And on this side, you dissect till you see the serratus anticus muscle. And once you have done it, you remove the whole breast and bring it into the lateral side. And there, I would like to just share with you a very important anatomical aspect. And that is the distribution of clavipectoral fascia. Clavicle, if you visualize the lower end of it, has got two layers of fascia, they go and as pectoralis minor muscle comes, it splits into two, it engulfs the pectoral minus muscle and again joins. When it again joins, it becomes suspensory ligament of axilla and then it is attached to the skin of the axilla. Now see, when you just go like this, you see the pectoralis major muscle, you identify the pectoralis minor muscle just on the lateral side of the muscle, you just make an incision because as you remember, breast is superficial to the deep fascia. When you And this uh, suspensory ligament is part of deep fascia. So when you cut it, you go into the axilla. And when you go into the axilla, you identify this axillary artery and all the structure below the axillary artery, you just take it out. I'll not go into detail of that because that is not the purpose. However, while doing that, you spare the long thoracic nerve and, subs and the subscapular nerve to latissimus dorsi and nerve to serratus anterior. You just save them. If you save them, that is a guarantee that you have done a good level 2 dissection. So that was about the anatomy of the breast. We'll continue this series. I hope it will be useful. Thank you for watching.